Today, I'm going to be turning my game from this into this multiplayer monstrosity you see in front of us. Now, to take it back to the start, all I had created was this dungeon generation. It was not fancy in any way, shape or form, but it worked well and allowed me to add on to it when I needed to, such as adding objects that are littered around like this, or adding elevation within the rooms, or more floors, as you could see in this really early demo in front of us. After creating this dungeon generation, as you have seen in other videos, I have implemented extra designs and enemies in the caves. After all that, I went back in to hack in multiplayer and I realized multiplayer wasn't going to work because we need bodies. Well, players need to see the other players, but we had nothing other than floating swords before. So I tried going to Mixamo and creating one from there with my own custom model. There was, there was no luck. It looked like a Roblox character running around the map and I really did not like it. So I worked hard in Blender and created my own character. Well, this is Guy. He's a great guy. Please give Guy a name because um, he needs a name and I am not creative. So one of you can come up with the name below and whoever has the most like suggestion will become Guy's name. Please don't get too creative. But this is how he runs and well, look at those hips. I'm telling you, hips make all the difference. In the process, I accidentally turned this game into Mirror's Edge somehow, or Dying Light, whichever one you prefer. But here's an example of what I mean. In the first person camera, as you can see, his arms are running like this, and it just looks like you're playing a parkour simulator of some sort. All I need is some sort of roll instead of a dodge. I added him in after a lot of tweaking, which by a lot of tweaking, I meant making Blender and Unreal like each other because they hate each other. Their scaling is all over the place when you bring one in from the other. Now players have something nice to see. Well, no, don't don't look at that. Don't no. Well, shoot. After much while such easy, I added sounds based on the ground you stand on. And I have to be honest, Unreal makes this stupidly easy. Also, if you haven't already, make sure to go and subscribe and stay up to date on all the things I'm working on, or well, trying to get working. Now, to take on the difficult task I put on hold, saving. Yes, saving was the one thing I didn't want to deal with. But before that, as I put everything on hold, I went to fix all my stats because previously the server and the clients didn't understand which one should be using what stats. So a player would be moving at the speed of six, but the server would think they're moving at a speed of two, causing a horrible, I mean horrible, jittery mess. It probably doesn't help that my first Unreal game was a multiplayer game, but hey, I wanted to challenge myself. And well, that I did. Fixing these stats was a nightmare, but I got there in the end. Tinkering between what the server calls and what the player retrieves, I managed to fix it, and all the players have a capability of rolling a dice separately, and it working nine times out of 10. Back to the saving. I spent the longest time discussing with my friend on how to approach naming the save files, trying to come up with ways such as each player getting an ID of 1, 2, 3, 4 based on how many players join, leave, enter, but I then settled on, well, my game's going to be a Steam game. So I reached out to Gabe Newell, the holy saviour of everything Steam, and knew the minute I put it on Steam, I can use Steam IDs to save my game. So when a player joins or starts a game, their data is saved based on their Steam ID. Now this is temporary, it's going to be redone later on. But for the moment, because the Steam ID is unique for all users, you just put it in, save it, and it works. Everyone has their own stats and they retrieve their stats whenever they enter a new level. 
don't look too deep in. Otherwise, everything will break. Promise you. Just be happy it works. And well, in the end, here's the multiplayer that we were looking for. Cue us, Steve. After all the testing and the shenanigans of running around with other people, I have to say, multiplayer is a ton of fun and being able to connect with your friends outside of your own home really was not something I thought I could create, but I still have a bit to go before you can call a stable multiplayer as there was situations such as the seed not syncing up and players getting stuck on walls in one person's scene and not in the others. Either way, it has multiplayer and it's working. So, we call that an accomplishment. I got the task what I was trying to create done. Now, currently, I have started college, and with the fact that I'm busy, I'll be updating Dwarvain for Halloween while putting this game on hiatus, just for a little bit. This update for Dwarvain will be revamping all the levels, introducing some nice features such as flashlight colours, and improving on what there was before. So, be ready to see that soon, and if you've made it this far, thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.